everyone, it's Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. Now we are going to be starting our apples and pumpkin theme, and we'll be doing two weeks, just like we did farm. So let me show you how we have our classroom set up with different activities for apples and pumpkins. In our dramatic play area, we have our magnetiles, we have our magnetic wands, and we have our um, they're magnetic pumpkin bells and I got these about four years ago and I love them Unfortunately, I don't think they're available anymore on Amazon I always like to put a link in the description just in case they come back Which I will do this time and hope 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 that they do come back because they are wonderful and they're great while exploring magnets in a dramatic play area we have a farmers market I created a printable packet that has labels that you can use. It's free and I'll put a link in the description. And there's one that shows where the cash register is. There's one that you can put on a basket for vegetables and for fruit. It shows where the scales are, where the pumpkins are and the apples and the flowers. We have cash registers and all kinds of fun things and the children can use the additional baskets to choose which produce they want and put them in their baskets and pretend to pay for them. And one of our printables that we have for our writing area is an apple. I will put this in the link to this free printable in the description and then our children can either use markers or they can use duodots to color the apples. In our reading area we have a felt board where we have some red, green, and yellow apples and they can, the children can move them around on the felt board and then I took our printable from our apple sorting activity. I'll drop a link in the description. On our light table we are exploring pumpkins and what I did for the pumpkin seeds is I took a gallon freezer Ziploc bag and I did the freezer because it'll be um, a little bit thicker and I filled it with some liquid dish soap and a little bit of orange liquid watercolors and then I put some um, I put some pumpkin seeds in it and I folded it over and taped it really well secured it and then I taped it to the light table so the children can just kind of go and they can press it it's kind of a fun feeling to move them around and then I also have some of our orange color bottles that were left over from our rainbow collection on our easel I'm taking the same apple printable that we have over in our writing table and they're just going to be rolling some red paint onto the apple using rollers and we have been loving using rollers um, we've been using them on a flat surface with uh, doing group activities where all of the children just kind of push the rollers together around the table and so now we're going to be doing it using a vertical surface and then you have the option of leaving it as is when it's dry or you can cut the apples out you can hang them in your classroom on the wall or whatever it's your choice and then when we're done doing the apple I'll use our pumpkin printable and we'll still use the rollers and we'll do some yellow and some red paint it'll be some color mixing and they're going to see what happens when they mix the two colors on top of the pumpkin in our sensory bin I dyed some rice I did some of it orange and some of it yellow just so it gives some different tones and you, the way you do this if, if you haven't dyed rice before is that I put some rice into a gallon Ziploc bag. I don't fill it all the way because you need to have some room to move it around. And then what I did was I just took some Wilton's food coloring, the gels, that's what I prefer to use because they give nice vibrant colors, but you can also use food coloring. And I just simply put, some, I use a toothpick and put a few dollops into the bag. And then I put a little bit of vinegar and there's, well, you don't need a whole lot. And then I press on the bag until it all is thorough, the color is thoroughly, thoroughly um, covering all of the rice. And then I have a tray with paper, with a paper, lined with paper towels. 
and then I put the um, I put the rice out, the dyed rice out onto the tray so it can dry. And I, like I said, I did two different batches: one um, orange and one yellow. And then I also added some little pumpkins, a little party favor pumpkin size. We've had these for years um, and the children love them because they're a nice size to hold. And then I have some scoops so that they can fill them. They're gonna absolutely love just filling them and dumping them. And then I also have some other um, little gift boxes and they can use that too. They can fill that up and dump that out with the rice as well. And then at our, on our table activities, I have this apple, this threading apple. I got it off of Amazon last year and it, it, it actually arrived too late. Um, it wasn't prime and so I had to wait for it and it came after um, we were done with our apple theme, but I saved it and now we can use it this year and I'll drop a link in the description. And then also we have this Melissa and Doug, um, Mickey and Minnie Mouse, uh, kind of like a fall picnic scene. It's with the magnetic wand and you just, move this, the pieces come up like this with the magnetic um, wand attached. These kind of puzzles are great for fine motor. Our kiddos love them. And so I, I wanted this one because it had the apples in the apple tree, so that kind of goes with our theme. And then I also have this free printable. I'll put a link in the description. And I like to make two copies. I put them on cardstock, that's heavier paper, or you can laminate them. So I make two copies, I keep one copy intact, and then the second copy, I cut them apart so they're cards. So they're just matching them up. They'll put the two card where they see the two apples and they'll do that for all of them. But again, I start with just the first card one to four and then I add on as I see that they are ready. Another printable that I have, um, I have the link is in the description and it's free. It's a pumpkin shape matching activity you just cut them apart so they're puzzle pieces. Another printable activity that I have is this col um, pumpkin color matching. So I made two sets and you just put the matching colored card on top until all of the different colored pumpkins are matched. And one of our fine motor art activities is going to be taking wine corks with red tempera paint and they're going to be stamping onto the tree. This is a free printable. I'll put a link in the description that I created. Put the apples on the tree and then they can just press the wine cork onto the tree to put their apples on. The point of this is I love using wine corks for fine motor the way that they have to use their hand, their thumb and fingers to hold it. We've been doing other, um, some process art activity using wine cork, so I wanted to keep going with it. And so I thought this is kind of good, this is nice to go with our apple theme. Another art activity that we're going to be doing is stamping pumpkin cookie cutters into paint and then onto paper. And probably what we'll do is first cover the entire table. We've really loved doing this with our two and young three-year-olds where we just cover the table completely with butcher paper. And then we remove the chairs from the table and they can just walk right up to the table and stamp and often they like to move around while they're stamping, but it also can be done independently where you just give each child his own sheet of paper and then he can stamp pumpkins onto his paper. And another art activity that we're going to be doing is spin art pumpkins. So I have a, the printable, the pumpkin printable that we use for the easel. It also comes with smaller pumpkins. Again, that link is in the description and I just cut it out. I had it copied onto cardstock so it's heavier paper and then they're going to squeeze yellow and red paint and then they're gonna put the top on the salad spinner and they're gonna spin it around to color the pumpkin. At our water table, we are going to be taking some more of those small little party favor pumpkins and I'm going to be filling either side of the table with water just a little bit, you don't need a whole lot. It, and this is very similar to what we did last week when we, um, we did our farm animals. But now we're gonna be using pumpkins instead. And we're gonna be doing the droppers again because this is great fine motor strengthening. So they will squirt the water into the pumpkins. 
And then at our science table, we are going to be exploring the inside of a pumpkin. So last week we got introduced to the pumpkin by painting it. We painted on the outside of it. We had fun just using Q-tips, cotton swabs, and just putting some paint on it, washing it off. Um, you can do that over and over again. And then um, we wash all the paint off because now we're going to actually explore what's inside the pumpkin. So again, we'll be cutting this open and we'll be pulling the seeds out and um, exploring the insides. And then in our Play-Doh table, we have our orange Play-Doh and we have some pumpkin cookie cutters. We have some pumpkin straws that I cut down so that basically you're just, we're just using the pumpkin part of the straw so they can stick it into the Play-Doh. And then I have some also some little um, cupcake topper, a little stick, pumpkin, pumpkin sticks that they can also press into the Play-Doh. And then at, uh, for circle time, we will be reading 10 red apples and dappled apples. And we will also be reading these pumpkin books Five Little Pumpkins, Duck and Goose, Find a Pumpkin, and the Itsy Bitsy Pumpkin. So that's how we have our classroom set up for the apples and pumpkins theme. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel and also click on the bell icon so that you will get notifications every time I publish a new video. Thanks for watching.